Hey everyone, hope you're all okay. Today we are going to be looking at some of the portrait features in Luminar 4.2. So just like the AI sky features in Luminar, um, there is also a section dedicated to portraits. So again, a lot of these features will be for people who want to, who don't know how to use Photoshop or don't want to use a complicated editing system, but want to go into a program and very easily uh, edit a portrait and get amazing effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the effects on a few images. We're going to start with this image here that I took a, a long, long time ago, um, but I think it's good to show the power of Luminar's portrait features. And then I will show you again some of the other features on a man's face and then some really bad skin, just so you get the full range of different ways you can use the program. So as I've mentioned in the previous tutorials, I tend to work within Photoshop and use Luminar inside Photoshop, but you don't have to do that. You can use Luminar as a standalone program to do all these things that I will be doing in this tutorial. So let's go up to Filter, let's go to Skylum Software, let's go to Luminar 4. This will open up the interface. So now the image is loaded in, into the interface. The all the um, portrait features are again, if you go along this right hand side and move down three, this little smiley face here, and then obviously it says portrait next to it. After a couple of seconds, this is where you want to be. So let's click on that. So this image was shot a very long time ago. I was going for uh, an 80s feel with the shoot uh, and the model brought all her own 80s uh, outfits with her. So this image here was a, was a portrait. I was trying to get something similar along, to, along the lines of something you would see on a Cyndi Lauper kind of um, music album. So what we're going to do is, what I'm going to do is we have different options in the portrait uh, section we have AI skin enhancer, AI portrait enhancer, high key and art and effect. So let's just jump into the AI skin enhancer first. If you click the side the dialog box pops down and you get these options here. So you have AI skin defects removal, amount and shine removal. So what these do is AI skin defects removal removes any kind of blemishes or moles from the face. And then the amount is the amount of skin enhancing that you want to use. So when you use the skin enhancer, it, it, it kind of blends, it smooths the colors, but it keeps, it also keeps the pores. In some, some of these third party skin enhancing, it just blurs the skin totally and the skin looks, it looks like a bit, a bit like something you would see on a Barbie doll. Now, if we click on the advanced settings, we have glow, contrast and saturation. So glow as it, says on in the name just adds a glow to the image like so adding a little bit more light and it does it, it works um does it work for me i do actually quite kind of like that it does brighten up the face a little bit in the sides so let's have a little bit of a glow somewhere along those lines and then contrast obviously globally Changes the contrast of the image. Not very strong though, which is probably good for people who have heavy handed <laughs> slider fingers. So let's go. So I'm going to bring some contrast. I'm going to keep the contrast around 34. And then saturation obviously adds saturation to the colors in the image. That's desaturated. Actually, because we're going for, was going for the 80s feel and everything in the 80s was, was very colourful, I'm going to go for more saturation. So somewhere around there. And for this image, I'm not going to use the art and effect. And that is what we don't want. We don't want Barbie doll skin. But for people who don't use Photoshop, or don't know how to use Photoshop, especially to retouch skin, then these kind of programs, and especially Luminar's uh, Portrait Skin Enhancer, is especially for you. So let's go in and click, first of all, on the AI Skin Defects Removal, like so. As you can see, image is processing. And then if we click off and on, as you can see, it's got rid of the mole. Has it got rid of any of our skin defects? 
just click off and on not that I can tell so I'm, that's probably the main one what that we would want it to get rid of so once we've got rid of the um, skin defects what we want to do then is click on a mouse and slowly pull up let go let's see what it looks like again you want to do it in little chunks just to see the results because if you go too far it will look a little bit fake but let's go up a little bit more to somewhere around here so let's just click off and on so this eye here if you click onto the eye and hold the button you will be able to see the before and if you let go that you can see the results or you can go to this one here which is a before and after slider and you can see the effects like so so let's just click off this for now so the skin's not looking too bad there so let me just show you what it looks like if you put it up to 100 so as you can see still actually looking pretty good uh, to say it's on 100 let's zoom in so what you do notice is that you still have all the pores in the skin you can still see the lines on the forehead so you can see the pores here as well so let's I was bringing that around to about let's bring it to 75 there you go again smoothing the skin but keeping the pores which a lot of other programs do not do so let's zoom out and then shine removal basically shine removal sometimes when you're getting portraits you get hot spots or shine from the lights along the maybe the nose and the forehead what the shine removal does it just reduces these so let's pull that down so if you look at the forehead here that's before this is after so that's actually not looking too bad so let's just uh, do the before and after slider so this is before and this is after as you can see it's doing a great job on the skin let's pull that down just a little bit somewhere around about 59 like so so we've done this skin enhancing so once we've done that this is this this is a good template to, to start from on our portrait retouching but we don't want to stay here what we want to do then is move down to the AI portrait enhancer so let's click open the dialog box so once you open the dialog box you have all these options here you have face light red eye removal eye whitening eye enhancer dark circles removal slim, slim face 2.0 enlarge eyes improve eyebrows lip saturation lips redness lips darkening and teeth whitening so there's a, that's a very long list of things you can do to retouch your portraits but we are not going to use all of these on every image so let's start off with face light so we've got a decent light on the face already but let's see what happens when you bring it in the light so we can bring in the light a little bit more so it just pulls out the shadows of the face if you bring it up I still want to keep some of the shadow here but let's just bring it up to 15 and then red eye removal we have no need to use this slider in this image so we will not use this so let's next go to eye whitening and let's just pull that let's see what happens when we put 200 so that looks very unrealistic so like always you never want to push the sliders that far so let's take it to 69 and then eye enhancer so obviously eye whitening just whitens these areas of the eye and brightens them up eye enhancer deals with the um, iris of the eye here so let's just start pulling that up and what it does it brightens the center pulls out the color as well of the eye so let's move down let's dark circles I mean you have a little bit of dark under the eyes here let's just see what happens when we pull this yeah so what it's starting to do is the AI is is thinking of the makeup as well 
And we don't really want that. So let's just pull it back again. But we can just pull it up a little bit to like bring some to lose some of the darkness under there. Somewhere around there. Go back. So sixty one percent. Now the slim face two point oh I don't think we need to use this on the image, but I'll just give you a quick uh demonstration so as you can see uh we do not need to use this filter um it basically it shrunk the model's head uh it looks like she's uh someone's grabbed her by both sides and pushed her head inwards so we do not need to use that on this image at all and that, i would guess you would only use this very spa sparingly on any kind of image so let's have a look at enlarge eyes for some reason in portrait they always say to lengthen the neck a little bit or that people like a long neck and to make the eyes a little bit larger. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't tend not to go by those rules, or, um, but this is what has been said. So let's see what happens if we enlarge the eyes. So we've got a very you know, <laughs> manga-esque looking model. So uh, yeah, that's at 100, but we don't want to do that. But the thing is, the, th the thing I like about the eyelid enlarging on this is it kind of pushes the eyebrows up at the same time. Whereas some, it looks very distorted around the eye area here. So let's just go back. So I think I'll enlarge the eyes a little bit. So to 48. Now we are... I, at, I improve eyebrows so I don't think we need to use this one but basically what it does is if you have a model with light eyebrows if you pull this it will kind of darken and make the eyebrows stand out a little bit more and just define them we don't need to use that on this um, image so let's go down to lips saturation obviously this saturates the color of the lips so if I put it to 100, uh, 100 obviously we now have very oversaturated lipstick quite like the saturation on the lips as it is so let's move down to lips redness so basically this is filling in the color of the lips so maybe the lipstick here was missing a little bit you could slide this along and kind of fill that in a bit but it's, it's taking away this highlight here and I, I don't want that on this image also, maybe if you've got pale lips as well, very pale lips, that'll just add a little bit of colour back into those lips. So lips darkening. Again. Just taking, just, it's pulling the tone down of the lips so it darkens the lip. But again, I don't want to use that on this image. I like the highlights of the, on the lip as it gives the lip uh, shape and form. And then teeth whitening. Again, we don't need to use because we can't see her teeth. So once you've done the details in the portrait in the so you've got it to where you want it to look, you can finish there or you can use high key and art and effect. Now high key and art and effect, you won't need these on all your images. But this image here, I was actually going for a high key feel. So what we want to do is we will use a high key feature on this image. So if we click here and we get the high key effects. So basically high key is a very, um, it's kind of overexposed. It's very pale and bright. It's just a style of photography that, um, I don't know if it's as prevalent nowadays, but in the nineties it was, uh, it was what everyone was uh, going out and getting done. I remember local places around the city I lived, they would have studios that specifically just shot all high key images and they did very well for a while. Um, I'm not sure if they're still around, but... So let's go down and like the, like, again, we've got the various options for the high key. We have amount, standard high key, dynamic high key, and then blacks. So let's go to the amount and let's just start pulling this up. So if we put 200, obviously it creates a very bleached out image. But let's just slide it up slowly to somewhere around 29. See, I quite like that. That looks good. Let's have a look at standard high key and dynamic high key. So that's the standard high key. Again, just bleaching out the images. Dynamic high key. 
Let's put them all around the edges. And then blacks obviously is like the contrast. It plays with the dark the darks of the image, so your shadows, so you can either darken them or take the contrast out. So it's um let's have a look. I quite like both of those actually, that's a little too dark. Let's have a look. Still want some darks in, but not. Somewhere like 71 works for me. And let's just, so let's just go up now to the before and after slider. And this was the image before, and this is the image now. And I think that's done a pretty good job of taking a base image and turning it into a high key portrait. So let's turn that off. So this is before, this is after. Now for people, like I mentioned before, who are new to Photoshop or are not very good at Photoshop, don't like having to, having to work on too many layers and retouching, this is the perfect program for your um, portrait retouching. It's so simple. You've just basically, you've got the features along here which you can then change with dialog boxes and sliders and just move left to right and get the effects in real time how you want it. So let's just um, apply this and then I will show you the skin enhancing um, on a man's face and then on some skin that is fairly bad. And then would in Photoshop take a lot of hours of dodge and burn. Let's see how the filter works on that. So there we go, that's the image. So now let's go to this image here, which is a friend of mine. Let's go to filter. Skyrim software, Luminar, and let's see the effects on a male portrait. Again with male portraits you don't want to go as far retouching wise. So the image is now open, let's go to the right again, down to the portrait features. Let's click on AI Skin Enhancer. First of all again let's click blemish removal. So as you can see he had some blemishes on his face here, it's done decent job of getting rid of them. So again let's try the skin enhancing. So that's after, that's before, that's after. Again with men you wouldn't want to take it too far. Then shine removal, let's see how shine removal affects this face. So this is not that much shine on Nick's face, it doesn't do that much. So let's go down to the portrait enhancing features and let's go to face light. I don't think we really need that on this image, but let's pull it up a little bit. Dark, any dark circles? Yeah, so we can get rid of those dark circles a little bit. We don't want to go to 100%. Do we need to enlarge his, high, his eyes? it does work a little bit with his eyes a bit bigger. Let's try improving Nick's eyebrows. So yeah, it just basically darkens the eyebrows, makes them stand more, but I don't think we need to do that. Lip saturation, lips, let's try lips redness on this. So you can see if he's got pale lips. This is probably more for women, but um, Let's pull that up a little bit actually, get some colour in those lips. And then we don't need to use teeth whitening, so let's go to, that. this is before and this is after. So you can be as subtle or unsubtle as you like with these. I would uh, advise to be subtle with these portrait features, otherwise your, your person could look very plasticky or cartoony and we don't want that. So just a few, quick few little touches on the uh, portrait enhancing and we've got a very well retouched photo of Nick. So let's apply that. And then let's go in to someone who has worse skin and let's see how the skin enhancing works with that. So this is the image we shall use here. Let's go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar 4.
So as you can see, the skin will be a little bit more tricky for the AI on in this, but let's see how it handles it. So again, let's go to the portrait features, the AI skin enhancer. Let's start with the skin defects removal. So image is now processing. So it's before and after. So it's got a few rid of a few blemishes up this area of the face and on the cheeks as well. One here, one there. Like so. And then let's take the skin removal up now. To around about 70%. Let's get rid of so these these areas here are the shine in the image on the cheeks and the forehead. So let's just remove some of that as well. To around 46%. So let's have a look at the before. So that's the before and that's after. So it does a, a really good job of um, quite bad skin. Where there's uh, blemishes and discolorations. Now to me that's not as good as the other two, you can still see some areas around here and here. Um, so you, you maybe would need to go back in and maybe clean them up a little bit. So let's just go down and have a look what we can do. So let's add some face light actually. It's a little bit of face light. Enlarge the eyes a little bit. So there we go. So you've seen the process now on three types of images. You've seen it on the female model. You've seen it on my friend Nick's and you've seen it on this guy's face here. So again, it's, it's, it's all up to you how you use these uh, features. I would advise to use them subtly. Try not to go overboard. Um, be wary of losing the pores in the skin. Luminar 4.2 does an amazing job of keeping the pause, but if you push it too far, it can still look a little fake. I hope it's helped you realise just how powerful this program can be and how quick and easy portraits can be to retouch. Um, if you go into the comments, feel free to leave a message if you have any questions. And at the moment, um, if you go to the Luminar and you want to try it out for yourselves, you can download the free version for a trial month. And if you like it, you can then purchase it. But also, if you do decide to purchase, if you type Clinton in at checkout, you will get £9 off. I'm not absolutely sure what that is in dollars, but I'm sure it's somewhere along those lines. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace.